So welcome Caitlin Menzel, an absolute rock star in the uh, industry and in the business world, um, an absolute superhero. Caitlin, um, you started your coaching back in 2017, but um, let's talk about all of your awards and everything <laughs> you've been involved in. Absolutely incredible. So you were a presenter at Hair Festival 2022, a yes. judge for Australian Modern Barber Awards 2022, a judge for Australian Hairdressing Industry Awards 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, <laughs> and a judge for Woman in Front Awards. And I'm going to keep going because I want your head to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Presenter um, at Woman in the Front 2020, 2021, 2022, founder and previous owner of Hunter Barber Shop. You're also the 2020 GMHBA Geelong Young Woman of the Year. Oh my God, what an achievement. That's crazy. <laughs> You're also a certified neurolinguistic programming master practitioner. So NLP, guys, yeah. for those of you who don't know. You're a published author. You're a founder and previous owner of Huntress Hair Religion. Yep. You're a previous owner of Raw Edge Hairdressing, where that was when we first met. Um, yes. And you and I became more than just customer and uh, business owner, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, previous owner of Chelsea Lane Hair and Beauty. Founder of Women Empowering Women Group. Presenter at Salon Growth on 2019. Presenter at Hair Razor Fellowship 2019. Writer for Hair Biz Magazine. I'm still going. 2018 GBEA Young Entrepreneur of the Year. And also um, you were Geelong Entrepreneur of the Year as well. And AHC Associate Coach, ABIC associate coach and a judge for 2018 Deakin University Start Con Pitch for a Million. Yeah. If I had a hat, I would take <laughs> it off to you. I just think it's important to have your street cred somewhere. It's funny when you read back, I'm like, God, I forget about half these things because they you kind do. of blend in. So it's cool to look back on. I've, yeah. I've been really blessed with the network and the connections I've built that I've been invited to do things like even the start con pitch for a million I think was the last thing you read out there which I felt like I was in shark tank so I got to like <laughs> judge people at all these startup businesses and predominantly they were tech which is totally not my world but it was really interesting to like watch what people are creating and why they decided to innovate in that way and just things like that like that's like there are amazing things to be a part of I'm very blessed very blessed yeah I mean you say you're blessed but <laughs> Know about that I think it's I think it's more putting yourself out there and hard work determination purpose as well so um yeah I think it, it's absolutely incredible what what you have achieved and you're not even 40 yet no, are you? I'm 32 yeah 32. oh my god Okay. I'm nearly 30. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm very conscious when my clients say, oh, I'm so lucky, or even my friends say I'm so lucky. I'm like, hey, luck is not the right word. Blessed, yes, lucky, no. I'm like, you've worked for this, you know, you've worked yeah. for this. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm a big, big like believer in, in um, you know, not not using the word lucky when when you have really worked your butt off to achieve what what you've achieved. And it, sure. You know, it does annoy me when people say to me, oh, you're so lucky. It's like, no, nah, wasn't uh, luck. <laughs> and look, I feel like, <laughs> yeah. and this is generalising, but I feel like that comes to females more than males, the amount of people Definitely. that I've said, that I've had say in my life, oh, you know, I've been, okay, you've seen my car, I've got a bright green Chevy Camaro, it's like my dream car, I've wanted that car for years. So I bought it as a reward for myself because we did a really massive turnover year and the amount of people that were like, oh, but you got that with your divorce settlement or did your parents buy that car? I literally had an older guy stop me at the plaza the other day and be like, oh, did mum and dad buy that car? I was like, <laughs> sorry, what are you projecting onto me? You drive it with something shitty, obviously. I'm like, oh my God, I don't yeah. mind. I don't really care, but I find it very, very funny that 
even my boyfriend's like he'll drive it sometimes and people will stop he's like no it's my girlfriend's car <laughs> but yeah that. people like to project their their rubbish like that and yeah oh you're so lucky I work really hard <laughs> Yeah, you just want to slap them. You know, it's got nothing to do with luck and walk off. <laughs> it tends to be the, and again, not generalizing everyone, but it tends to be those, you know, middle to later age white males, doesn't it? <laughs> you don't understand that yes. life's different now. It's 2022. <laughs> yeah, like get with the program. Us girls are achieving things <laughs> and have been for a very long time. I know, 100%. Yeah. Um, so, Let's go to the first question that um, sort of stumbled you a little bit, maybe, <laughs> or you were like, oh, I've had this question before. I think because I'm a teacher, I really wanted to know this, or, you know, I was a teacher. So what is the difference between a coach and a consultant? Mm, it's a funny one because I'd actually never thought about it. And um, <laughs> I was having a chat with Cam last night about it. He's like, maybe you know the answer to this is like we talked about this today in class and he said to me and I agree with him a consultant is a person who I guess in the business context would predominantly focus on the business but they tend to do the work for you and create the answers for you whereas a coach is someone who will teach you how to do things for yourself and empower you to do things for yourself so you know as a whole I think yeah. a coach is someone who's there for like you know, the wins, the breakthroughs, the breakdowns, all the things that go on and they're there to cheer you on, but they're there to, like, I give my clients, I don't give them the answers, I ask them the questions and make them think the answers for themselves. And I think that's really important. I think if you're with a coach who does the work for you, you're not really going to learn anything. So that would be more yeah. of a consultant versus a coach. A consultant will do it for you. A coach would kind of teach you how to do the things and encourage you to do it for yourself. And I think yeah, it's important to it. coach your staff as well and mentor your staff to be, you know critical thinkers and to troubleshoot things and to actually try and try and work for themselves and think for themselves yeah create you know like a fostering environment rather than sure. a dependent environment yeah, yeah. nailed it nailed it Kate. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good I'm actually it was really good like yeah reading through some of these questions I was like oh these are really good like I'm actually getting you really thinking I love this <laughs> oh thank you feel free to use them in uh <laughs> if you ever do interview <laughs> so um so you started in in the hair industry at just the age of 13 incredible mm. um so what what was it about the industry that, that you love so much if I'm honest I fell into it <laughs> and yeah. my mum was a hairdresser turned men's hairdresser turned barber and she was amazing and she was actually somebody I feel like a lot of hairdressers of, of that generation that was kind of like don't do it like it's hard work like <laughs> you won't like it whatever and when I was yeah I was 13 I was in year eight and I remember we got asked to go and do like short courses to then see if we would like to take the vet pathway into doing a trade I knew I wasn't book smart I hated I literally at that point wouldn't have done anything to get out of school I fucking hated school I was bullied I didn't fit in anywhere. I kind of had, I didn't have like a close circle of friends. I was kind of friends with everybody, but was just, yeah, it, high school was hard for me and I didn't like it. And I was always told that I was stupid and that I wasn't going to amount to anything. So I think I would have done anything at that point to get out of school. So I did this course that went for six weeks or something. And then it was hair makeup and I think it was hair makeup and I don't know, photography or something. It was something really random. And then from there, I got a job as a basin assistant with my neighbor um and then they kind of hired other people and then I moved into another job as a basin assistant and I ended up actually owning that salon and um from there just went into vet then started doing my apprenticeship when I was 14 and then just kind of got stuck in the industry but thank god because it's given me so much I definitely loved it you know by the end of my apprenticeship and stuff but I don't yeah. I wouldn't say that I, I was one of those people who's like I'm always going to be a hairdresser I'm always going to whatever I think it was a really good creative outlet for me in a way for me to get out of school and then I ended up falling in love with it <laughs> <laughs> I think the hair industry opens a lot of doors and I think yeah um yeah it gave me the ability to be creative every day it really brought me out of my shell um it taught me a lot, a lot about communication and interaction and 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 stuff like that as well my apprenticeship was really hard too I worked for really 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 tough bosses two yeah. men um and they were very tough and it was very much a you work 50 hours a week you don't question anything you get paid the bare minimum there's you know no extras and 
they taught me how to be an amazing hairdresser. It was a very, very hard few years. And then, yeah, pretty much stepped into owning a salon and then owned another one and then owned another one and then owned another one. <laughs> <laughs> so do you think because they were so hard on you that that drove you to be different when and and to open your own salon? And But do you feel like you had you still had some of what they taught you as a boss as well towards your... Yeah, um, I, I think that um, I was raised in a family of two tradespeople. So mum and dad were both tradespeople and they also owned a motor mechanics business for 30 years. And they very much raised me that a job is a privilege, not a right. You respect your bosses, even if they treat you like shit. And don't get me wrong, I, I, there's definitely, an, you know the world's changing now where there is bullying and stuff like that, but there is also yeah. an element of kind of get on with it, you know, like get on with it. Their, their life's on the line too. So I think I was always extremely respectful to my bosses and extremely respectful to the people that I worked with and especially the people who had sort of seniority to me. Mm-hmm. So with that, I think there was probably a few years there where I was quite strong and harsh and, and whatever. And I definitely think I learned that the hard way with losing staff and whatever. I also worked with I think when I first owned my business everyone in my business I was 19 so everyone in my business was like in their 30s and 40s and they were kind of raised the same so it was was very toxic and very yuck and whatever and then I think from that I spent a lot of time working on myself working through my anxieties working through my history of bullying working through a lot of things that I stopped projecting so much of my shit onto other people and I started being more humble and being more supportive and being more nurturing and I guess being more um, understanding that people don't have the same interests in my business as I do. I think that's a big, 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 hard bit of pill to swallow as well is that as an owner, Mm -hmm. you, it's your livelihood. It's your business. You're going to give it 110%. You maybe don't meet people like that. Yeah. yeah, I think I would start to hide anyone and everyone. I would take on anyone and everyone. I had the mentality of <laughs> cater to the masses and the masses will come, work 80 hours a week, but don't pay yourself because people will try and, you know, belittle your pricing and things like that. So it's funny how all that happened. So I definitely learned lessons of how I didn't want to be. I definitely saw traits of them in myself that I had to learn to let go of. And yeah, um, yeah I've definitely done a lot of transforming in the last 10 years or 12 years of being self-employed. <laughs> That's awesome. And so with yeah. your coaching, a lot yeah. of what you've learned in being a salon owner yeah. and also what you've learned from observing your parents and being around your parents as well mm-hmm. um, has helped you to be such an amazing coach as yeah. well. I but you have other coaches, don't you? So you actually own a business where it's yourself but you have taught other coaches to yeah Yeah. so I'm really blessed I had never expected it to take this direction but it has which is awesome so my history I have had a hair and beauty salon um but it wasn't long before I sort of took the beauty out to you really utilize the hairdressing part of it the hairdressing really grew but um aside from that I've owned two other hairdressing salons and a barbershop and so my focus and my passion, I guess, is more on the hair side of things. I definitely have had beauty clients and, I, you know, a lot of businesses copy and paste um, mm-hmm. across, especially across our industry. But I'm really blessed. My coach, Phoebe, came into my life, I think, November last, no, November the year before. She's been with me for ages. It was November 2020. It was the end of 2020. So um, she came into my life. I manifested her with everything that I had. So I was like, I want somebody who's got history and beauty. I want someone who's almost like a school mom, someone who's a little bit older and super organized because I'm the most scattered person alive. And um, I hired her as my assistant. And just with me being so busy or taking time off here or there or whatever, she's kind of coached my clients. And I was like, She's owned a beauty salon herself in Sydney, a very successful one. She's also done a rent a chair sort of situation or rent a space situation up here in Noosa. Um, and she's managed beauty salons as well. So she brings a lot of elements and she's like skin and brows and like all the really popular stuff at the moment. And just from that, I was like, babe, you could be coaching. Like, why are we not utilizing you as a coach instead of as my, you know, assistant and, you know, client, client manager sort of person? So yeah, she's coaching beauty salons now. So she's got, um, I think about five or six spas that she works with now and it's going really well. And Mm -hmm. one 
solo operator hairdresser. So she's doing really well, really, really well. And it's going awesome. really well. And it's just so nice to take a bit of a load off. <laughs> yeah. 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 She it's, brings definitely a different edge to me. And um, yeah, she's awesome. It's also nice to have somebody else to bounce ideas off. So she's killing it. Yeah. That's that's so awesome that you've been yeah. able to create that kind of environment for her in, in the first place. And then her just going with it and then you seeing what her skills are and what her strengths are and saying, right, this is what you need to do. And that, you know, that is the key sign to great leadership is when you can really see those strengths in, yeah. in people and, and be able to, you know, help them bring that. Yeah. So. I think that's so important, like in the salon world and stuff as well. It's like, if you've got people who are good at something, like get them doing more of that, it'll keep them happier and yeah. they'll always do really well at it and it'll keep them performing better. We have this, I yeah. look probably again, going back to, you know, my first bosses and even the people who I bought my salon off, they had that mentality that everyone has to perm and everyone has to set and everyone has to do hair ups and everybody has to do everything. And there is an element of sometimes you've just got to suck it up and do the things you don't like, but definitely later yeah. in my career and later in my business ownership. And especially when we had hunters, which I think at one stage had oh, 27 staff, I think like there was like the color specialists and the cutters and the blow dryers and the, you know, coordinators and everybody had their role. And that's why it worked as a well-oiled machine. And everyone was happy because they're doing more of the work that they love. I'm not going to promote blondes to someone who doesn't like doing blondes, you know, like yeah. I put that client in with them either because the client's not going to be happy. Like use people's skills and learn to relinquish control and like hand it over to people, <laughs> which is something we really struggle with as owners as well. Yeah. Delegation. Do you, do you find it's hard to to delegate? It's oh, not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I used no. to. Now I'm like, can you do this? Same. Can you do this? Yeah. <laughs> I've got, Same. yeah, like I used to try and do everything and then you'd get really stressed and then you'd kind of do nothing because your to-do list would be so long. And I definitely do that to myself sometimes now, but I've got um, another assistant who's worked for me for, oh, it must be six years now. She was my coordinator and then managed my barbershop. And then when I sold that, she asked to stay in with me. So she lives down in Geelong, so she works remotely, but she does all my horrible jobs. I love her so much. She's my favorite person. <laughs> she, today she's like cleaning out our mailing list. So I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. This is such a horrible job. And she's like, no, it's fine. It has to be done. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> but, but you yeah, know, one thing. person's horrible job is another person's, you know, they love it. So. Yeah. And she's happy as long as her kids are and her kids and she can do it from home. She's totally happy. So I don't know. Yeah. I think that, yeah, delegate anything that's not the highest or best use of your time, especially when you're, I guess the the brains of the business or the, the ideas person behind the business you need to be creative and do your thing and, yeah. and creative and things, but get other people to help you do that yeah absolutely I'm and, outsourcing. yeah and I mean it, it, business it owners that don't that have a house, oh my god I was gonna say for all of you business owners that don't have a house cleaner get one take one extra <laughs> <laughs> get someone to clean your house that sort of stuff is not the uh, highest of your stuff I have gone through five cleaners because I am super super fussy um and so yes I I do need a cleaner and I have reached out to someone who I thought would be able to clean my house but they haven't and yes so I'm spending about four hours on the weekend oh. cleaning our house um yeah. And I just don't have the time. Yeah. For that. So I, yeah, I, yeah. I, outsource I things like that. I I for three years when I was working on my salon floor and coaching and had my barber shop, I did had somebody cook all my meals. So there was a company that was in Geelong that was a um it was called Fit Pass Food. I don't actually know if they still exist anymore, but um they used to cook all my food. And then I'd have somebody come in do my laundry, and then I'd have people come in and clean my house because that was like a day of my life that I could then input into my businesses god delegate that shit just del yeah. and it made me eat better I wasn't eating crappy food I was eating well and yeah that yeah. sort of stuff don't do yeah. admin don't do <laughs> at the start you have to but yeah not, yeah. not as you get into it yeah I think as well like you you have to do that stuff in order to be able to coach your team you know um lead your team as well because you have you have to sort of totally. know 
to some degree, like how to do, you know, certain techniques, certain procedures, processes before you can, you know, um, delegate it. So, do you not, yeah. do you not sit there yeah. and go, how yeah. many boxes of foil can I sell? <laughs> that will buy me X, Y, Z. I'm like, if I get one extra client or two extra clients, I can buy business class flights, business class flights somewhere or like, <laughs> like work it out how many people I need to add. <laughs> I actually don't do that, but um, yeah, it, you it'd, will be now. Interesting. <laughs> it'd be an interesting exercise. I think for me, it's more, um, you know, like trying to make sure that we're, you know, sticking to our mission and, and achieving our vision and that kind of thing, which yeah. obviously comes into the, like selling foils, but, um, you know, like new products as well and um for sure that you know we should be exposing to the industry such as yourself so yeah <laughs> but really that. really awesome tips so what has been a highlight in your career you know something that really sticks out to you or like a a, a um, moment that provided you clarity oh, or, yeah <sighs> I was thinking about this and I was like this is so hard because there's so many things yeah. um I think just like honestly just just having an idea and making it happen example my barbershop I loved owning my barbershop had it for three years sold it last year um like I just had this idea and I you know waited up and did all the work and, and made it happen and it was really successful and same with my salon I really just think giving things a crack and, and not giving up on things and really like planning it, doing really well with it and just, just running with it. I think anything like that should just really be celebrated. And I think we forget that I remember when I bought the first salon that I bought was a fucking lemon. It was turning over like two and a half thousand dollars a week. And I had three full-time staff, including myself. Um, and turning that from yeah, three thousand dollars a week to about sixty five thousand dollars a week by the time we sold it oh, was like well you look back and you're like, oh, it's never enough. It's never enough. I keep putting the bar high. I keep blah blah blah, and like you keep yeah. you know, moving things up and up and up, and you yeah. forget to just take time and reflect on all the amazing things that you've done. Definitely, entrepreneur of the year was amazing. So I won the small business one and the main business one in the same year, which was sick. Yeah. But I think even now a massive career highlight for me is judging the Australian Hairdressing Awards and the Australian Barbering Awards. So the first Barbering Awards is this Sunday, which I'm super excited to go and be a part of. But yeah. that sort of thing is like a way of giving back, but also like seeing and celebrating what other people are achieving. I don't know. There's just so many things. Like, like this question was so hard. <laughs> like there's no like one pivotal thing, I think. Yeah. Hiring yeah. another coach, like putting on another coach, that was a huge thing. Um, just yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, gosh, you've achieved so much. So I can yeah. um, totally yeah. understand that it would be hard to find just one one yeah. thing. Um I think definitely with yeah, my look, clients, I, something I make them do is just reflect, like look at yourself two years ago, one year ago when you open your business or you know, you're going through this tough time, like look at it then and look at it now like look how far you've come like this is you two years ago being oh my god I would never have that that's so amazing I could never do that and then you do it like yeah just celebrate that take a minute be in the moment like just you know appreciate where you are at the moment we're always looking forward just sit with it yeah absolutely and you know like Caitlin you're an inspiration not not only in the in the business world but your personal life if you don't mind me bringing it up <laughs> You know, when I um, first knew you, you know, I, I would see um, your posts about, you know, building a new house, opening a new salon, and you were in Geelong. And then within a couple of years, you had made that choice that you didn't want to do that anymore. You didn't want to, you know, be with that person that you were with building the house. You didn't want to be in Geelong anymore. You didn't want to be doing what you were doing anymore and you just made that decision <laughs> you know how many people I'm so annoying I'm <laughs> just make no, it you're not annoying. <laughs> no you're not you're an absolute yeah. inspiration because you just went no I'm not doing it anymore and you just yeah did it. And, and I just, think yeah so, I think yeah. um you know I 
definitely work with a lot of people who are in this situation where they are probably married to the person they shouldn't be married to. Yeah. And they're perhaps, you know, got family members and stuff they shouldn't be in contact with. They've just got things in their life that they keep around because they're too afraid of the consequences of if they let that go. And it was only 12 months into my marriage that I realized, it was probably six months into my marriage really, that I realized I was married to the wrong man. And he wasn't the right person. He was a very not good person. And um, I left him and it was horrible. I lost everything. I lost my houses. I got to keep my businesses and I got to keep my dog, but I lost everything else. And that stripped me bare. It stripped me completely bare. I don't talk about this much, but it was also that year that I had breast cancer. And that often happens to women that when they release things like that, these sorts of things manifest in their bodies. And I was, again, I say this all the time, people think I'm stupid. I was blessed. I got the best breast cancer you could have. I had a stage one lobular carcinoma. It was cut out. There was no further treatment, nothing like that. So I had the most horrific year in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, 2017 sorry and then 2018 I left my husband it was just it was it was whilst it was an extreme amount of loss it was an extreme amount of growth and I felt free and I felt like the weight of the world was gone and in that moment I remember just thinking to myself I literally can do anything that I want I understand people have children and family commitments and other things that kind of keep them around but seriously fuck all the material stuff it doesn't matter I had wanted to move to Queensland for years and he never wanted to. So that was one thing. He just wasn't a very nice person and he had his own stuff going on that he wouldn't work on. Um, I gave it everything that I had and I left and yeah, my whole life changed. And now I'm like the happiest person ever. I live in an incredible apartment right in the CBD of the Sunshine Coast. Like I'm, I'm so blessed, but yeah, fucking leave the people that weigh you down. People, family, jobs, careers, businesses. If it weighs you down, let it go, move it on, move it on. <laughs> I, I think yeah. that's going to be that's going to be the defining quote of our <laughs> move on move yeah on. people yeah. beliefs places fucking anything for mm-hmm. sure it's yeah. a really yeah I mean I got some extreme bullying Geelong's one of the worst places in Australia I think for tall poppy syndrome I think that's a lot of small town things um, where anyone is doing any good, other people try and squash you. Um, and, you know, the amount of people that were like, your marriage failed, like, how could you do this? Blah, 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 blah. Like, just fully protecting my shit. And it's fine. I don't care what other people think of me. That's none of my business. Um, but, yeah, just just don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Don't worry about what anyone else believes. You just do what's right for you. You are the most important thing. And now I'm with the best man ever. <laughs> Who I dated a million years ago and randomly came back together. So, oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. so nice. That, it's good. Yeah, that's such a beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's all right. Um, I'm, a, I'm, you know, nothing to hide here. <laughs> but the, and that's probably, you know, the other thing on that is toxicity in your mind manifests into things in your body it manifests into back problems it manifested into a motorbike accident for me it manifests into all these other things in your life so it's like really important that your mind is sorted out and your life is sorted out and you're feeling good and you're taking care of yourself because it manifests in the worst ways and it will send you the worst messages and um, you know people die of all sorts of things and people have all sorts of horrible things going on and um yeah it can can come from anywhere but a lot of it's just what's going on in your brain and all the stuff that's weighing you down yeah no I I definitely saw that in in my dad you know like he he died of a melanoma yeah advanced melanoma but you know I know that cancer grew because of all the stuff that he you know he had going on yeah in in the past and so yeah I definitely I've learned from that. I think as well, you know, the meditation that I do well, transcendental meditation, it just grounds you, makes you more aware of everything that is around you. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. That's That's all right. NLP is a great thing to, um, a great thing to look into if that's, you know, sort of that side of your life that you want to work on. It's changed my life. Um, And it's made me a better coach, a better employer everything but yeah same as you like I'm big believer in what goes on in your brain goes on in your body and you know your cells aren't just in your brain they're everywhere and they manifest in their own ways so I'm really sorry that you had that 
experience as well I've lost so many people in my life to cancer it's a fucking awful thing it's an awful thing it is but thank you I really yeah that's incredibly generous of you to to share that so thank you so much (laughs) don't worry (laughs) um so let's let's go to something a little bit hopefully lighter um (laughs) if you could talk to one person from history who would it be? Okay, so I, I narrowed it down to four and I've just I've got to have them all together at a dinner table. We go get dinner. It'll be the most random dinner ever. Awesome. I'm so like <laughs> they're, a bit weird, they're a bit weird too. So um, one of them is Steve Jobs. So okay. there's things I, yeah. like, things I don't like about him, but one of the things that really stuck with me that he said years ago was we create products for people that they don't even know that they need yet. And I like, you know, creating an iPad, like 10 years ago, nobody or 20 years ago, nobody would have realized that they needed an iPad. And now like, we all live on that. We love them, right? We carry them with yeah. us. So I think that sort of like creative critical thinking is like a really, really cool thing that you could learn a lot from. And, and also just the way he lived his life was that you could walk past him in the street and not know who he was. I kind of love that as well. On the contrast to that, I would also, <laughs> I think um, Kim or Chris Kardashian would be people that I would love to have a chat to. I think. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I think they are. Look, I think they're very misunderstood, the Kardashian family. And I know there's a lot of people probably cringing going, oh my God, I can't believe you like them. I think they are so hardworking. I know that Chris Kardashian is like, you know, mentored the whole family and created all this work for them and, and put them out there and, and I think Kim's one of those people that just, you know, constantly does things. I remember those two years where she didn't take a single day off. And I think you could learn a lot from them. I think also the way that they've pioneered the use of social media to grow their businesses and really like, they're kind of famous for nothing, really. Like, I just yeah. think it's really, in- I think their business model is interesting. Mm. So I'd love to pick their brains. Um, another one is The Rock. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> I am a diehard wrestling fan. My mum and dad used to give us the day off school to watch WrestleMania when we were in primary school. (laughs) But I think how he's come from like poverty in Hawaii, or I think he's born in San Francisco, poverty in Hawaii to then being like this incredibly successful, you know, wrestler and then a movie career and then all these other things, um, I think is pretty amazing as well. And just I think he's somebody that everybody loves. Like I've, ne- I've never heard of anybody that doesn't really like him. Like he's just like a people's person. Yeah. Um, and the last one, which is going to really throw you is Candace Owens. So probably a lot of you don't really know who she is. So she's um, actually a Republican politician in the U S okay. and she's a very political person, but she's exposes a lot of um, truths and, and, and things about what goes on in politics and what's going on in the world. And, you know, she was one of the people who investigated the Black Lives Matter and all the money that they took and how that never got dispersed and, and things like that. So I think that, yeah, they're totally contrasting people, but I was like, I couldn't narrow it down to one. I was like, there's so many people. I could, I would have like a long table of like 40 people. <laughs> it would just be all really weird. That is so cool. I could just picture like you guys, you know, the Last Supper, the painting, but, you know, with Chris. Totally the Last Supper. <laughs> yeah 100 percent. aside from that wow. probably um the other person would be um steve Irwin. i just think the animal con- conservation and conservation in general and um again his attitude to things and just yeah i think that would be probably the other person but yeah super random <laughs> there's no consistency yeah. at all such a broad person <laughs> like all sorts of things no but you know that just goes to you know, explain or, or I guess, um, highlight, you know, the fact that, you know, you have such a successful um, career because you, you don't shut off anything. You're, you're Mm -hmm. open to to everything and and your choices of, you know, the four different people really shows that. And yeah, that's really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah. I think it's, um, funny thing I was raised in a very traditional family where you know my family didn't understand mental health they were very opinionated people and like my mom and dad have become more open now but they are who they are and they're very much their value system is how they were raised and that's a lot of people of that generation and I think I did grow up being extremely opinionated and being extremely judgmental and being you know like I remember 
and this is a horrible thing to talk about, but I remember one of my sister's school friends taking his own life and she was only about 15 and she didn't understand it. And my mum saying that, oh my God, that's so selfish because in her belief system, they were taught to believe that that was selfish, not understanding at all. There was all these other mental health things going on and that person believed the world would be better off without them. And, and you know, having that in your, in your mind would be the most awful thing ever. And it wasn't until, and I think I was, almost a, a very angry person and a very aggressive person and I think that what came right up until a big head when I was about 22 I was diagnosed with anxiety and then all of a sudden all these things made sense and then I was diagnosed with ADHD and so all these things made sense I was like oh my god this is why I'm so scattered and I'm so this and I'm so that and I can't go into meetings and I don't like going to work and I don't like going to school and I don't like all of these things and I think from there that was probably the trigger point for me of like work on yourself, understand yourself. And from there, I've become really understanding and less opinionated on other people's belief systems and other people's ways they live their life. Like, I don't agree with everything that Candace Owen does. I don't agree with everything that Kim Kardashian does, but I'm really interested in them. I could sit there and have a debate with you and tell you my opinion, but I'll still listen to your part of it. I think that's an important thing as well as just to, you don't have to agree with people, but you don't have to hate on them either. <laughs> I think I used to be a very, yeah, angry person, I guess. Yeah. So no. Yeah, go. Oh, I I was just gonna say, you know, it's it's interesting that you know, as soon as you were given that diagnosis of anxiety, ADHD, oh, yep. it made you go, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now I I have a reason yeah. why I'm like this. <laughs> I can change. Yeah, and bit. why I feel different, and why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's funny, like, you know, we were raised in a family and this would be my own parents, their siblings, their parents. Example, it's like, if you're anything other than happy, so if you're sad or you're angry or you're whatever, rather than them sitting down and going, you seem a bit angry, do you want to talk about that? They yell at you to shut you up. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> So you're like, you wonder why you like that later in your life. You're like, oh, I've carried that through with me. So it's like, yeah, that would be why if somebody was angry or emotional or anything else, you weren't taught to kind of manage your feelings. And I know that a lot of people in their late 30s and 40s and, and onward don't know how to manage those things because they're never taught to because the people above them didn't know how and the people above them didn't know how. So it's just this like genealogical shit show that carries down. It's ridiculous. So yeah, everyone needs yeah, to work on themselves. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a cycle and, and the only one that can break it is, yeah. is yourself. So, um, I, yeah, if you are planning on, on having children, I think you'll be amazing. <laughs> I'd love to fuck them up. <laughs> I oh, God. think you can, you know, you can try as hard as you as hard. But in the end, uh, I think it's uh, I think it's up to them, you know. Yeah. You can, you can give them... You know all the tools, but yeah. In the end, anyway, that's another. <laughs> that's um, a whole other thing. <laughs> Sorry, I've trailed off so much today. <laughs> well, so thank you so 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 much, Caitlin. Um, it's just been amazing having this. It feels it doesn't even feel like an interview. It feels like a like a catch up for coffee. So yeah, it's um it's been really awesome. Is there anything else you? you'd like to share with us at all I know you, um I haven't asked you specific questions that you know that we did give you I think we have covered a lot of it which is awesome yeah I think um probably the only thing is just I'll go with these last two questions that we didn't get to because we talked shit so much the whole way through well, I talked shit the whole way through top tip for people no, you to didn't. <laughs> top tip for people looking to become <laughs> salon owners would be it's really fucking hard and you have to buckle in for the hard work. And if you give it a few years of hard work, it will pay you back in droves, but you have to put your head down, butt up and get it fucking done. No one's going to yeah. get anything, go and get it done. So give it 10 years, give it five years, give it anything and it will pay off for you. Don't just expect things to be thrown at you. And the yeah, other I, think thing that, is, I think that's okay. for any, any business any as business well. Like, yeah. You, it is you hard, hard to, work. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Don't be blinded by it. You know, and I'm sure no. a lot of people listening here know that yeah, you've got to go yeah. and just yeah. just hustle, just hustle really hard. 
Um, and the other thing there is a lot of hairdressers struggle when it comes to pricing their services. Do you have any advice when it comes to giving them a price? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is really important, especially at the moment with all the inflation things happening that's just blowing everyone out of the water. So it's not your job to absorb your costs. Your costs get passed on to your clients. That's how it goes. So work out all of your costs, break it down by hour, by service, whatever. Add your profit that you want to make. Add your color in, like, Price yourself properly. Take the time to work it out. If you don't know how to do that, I can help you. Um, but don't buy into other people telling you you're too expensive or, oh, my God, that's gone up or whatever. Don't buy into that. Don't feel the need to justify the price is the price. And also, they want to go somewhere cheaper. Go somewhere cheaper. That's fine. Doors open. You know, know your worth. Mm -hmm. Charge what you're worth. And you don't have to absorb you know, if your color goes up or something goes up, add that into your pricing. So, you know, put your prices up. You don't have to absorb that stuff. That's not that's not how it works. And don't price yourself based on the people around you. Base your prices on what your costs are. Yeah. Know your worth. You make. Know your value. Yeah. 100% know yeah. your value. You have someone yeah. like educating, buying the best of the best products, like constantly learning, constantly growing, constantly being better that is more expensive than somebody who is just going to the barber who's been barbering for 45 years, who's never done anything extra and who's just doing the same thing in the same shop and there's no new stuff going on, you know, like it's, it, there's a difference. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, like a, a lot of the hairdressers out there now, um, you know, they're educating themselves. They're going to, you know, um, workshops that they're, they're going and, you know, that it could be interstate even. So yep. the amount of money that, you know, you guys, hairdressers are spending on themselves to educate themselves, to then bring it back to the salon to give the client the best, you know, quality, 100%. best service they can. Yeah, definitely pass that on. Yep. And, you know, if you're using amazing products like Foil Me, you need to pass that <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I just had to slip that in there, Caitlin. Oh. By the way, I'm here for it. No, I think um I think the narrative's changing in the last couple of years, especially I feel like people are going, fuck this. I'm a tradesperson too. I do the same apprenticeship, I do the same training, I do just as much ongoing training, if not more, to stay at the forefront. You have to pay for that now. And it's a beautiful yeah. thing to see. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, I'm go on that holiday, buy the nice <laughs> things, charge all the money, make all the money, work less like do do you think yeah yeah and you know our our mission is to elevate the hair industry in society's eyes and I think it's people like you Caitlin that are really contributing to that so thank you babe thank you very much me too making everyone like you should making everyone's foiling life easier I mean you know I was a big fan <laughs> of your foils <laughs> it's all overused <laughs> <laughs> We once have to use another brand, and I was like, "Oh my god, no, no, I can't." It's <laughs> a bit easier. I love yeah. it. It's so funny, actually, when when someone does actually say to me they're using another brand. I can't control my reaction. I actually have a physical. I'm like, oh, I actually have a physical reaction. I'm like, I really got to stop that because that's not. <laughs> That's not really and you're so animated. You're like, oh, don't show it on my face. Don't show it yeah. on my face. I'm like, I'm so glad I'm on the phone right now and not, not seeing that. That is so funny. My reaction. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're um, such creatures to have it. Once you find something you love, you just love it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, absolutely loved talking to you, Caitlin. Thank you so, so, so much. Oh, and um, what, yeah. 